Hey everybody, it's Matt. Welcome back to the Crypto Coffee channel. In this video, we're going to talk about some big news that's just come out. If you haven't really been paying attention right now, the Federal Reserve is going to be hiking interest rates in 2022, and it's been a bloodbath in markets, both traditional and crypto. You know, stocks are going down, and crypto, as much as people like to say that it's a decorrelated asset, well, it's not. Okay, that's just a lie. Because as we've seen with Bitcoin and Ethereum, they've tanked heavily in the past two or three days since this information was released. So on the news of the Fed discussing raising interest rates, markets are reacting pretty severely. Now, what does this mean, guys? In case you haven't been paying attention, the Federal Reserve basically controls all the money in the world and they control things like inflation. And one of the mechanisms by which they try to control inflation is by interest rates. So in times of low interest rates, it's easy to get money, money becomes less scarce, and then we enter a kind of a cash is trash market and a risk on market where assets go up and skyrocket like we've been seeing for the past two years in 2020 and 2021. However, now the Fed is saying to themselves, hey, can we really keep this going forever? Maybe we need to pull back a little bit. And so they've discussed raising interest rates three times in 2022. And that's what people call a hawkish stance or, you know, very bearish sentiment in general, which the markets are already reflecting and already pricing in. So markets tend to react very emotionally and very heavily to these things and also very early on. So they haven't actually raised interest rates yet, but they plan to. And, and that's really what the market is scared about right now. And there's fear everywhere. And so what does this mean for crypto? Well, guys, obviously crypto has been dropping if you've been paying attention to the charts. And that's because the Fed wants to make money harder to get by raising the interest rates and basically make money more scarce and get back to a cash is king kind of market where people are a little more risk off. It's more attractive to hold cash. And as a result, stonks and crypto go down. Okay, very simply put. But what can you do in crypto to protect yourself from this general bearish sentiment that we're seeing in Bitcoin, Ethereum, and a lot of altcoins right now. Basically, are there any safe haven assets in the cryptocurrency market that are insulated from these greater macro trends and that you can buy to protect yourself from prices going down? I think the answer is yes. So stick around till the end because we're going to talk about what assets they are and why. And if you haven't been following or subscribed to my channel already, obviously the assets I'm talking about are Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X. Okay, these are really paradigm shifting in crypto. So if you're not familiar with them, Check them out. There's all these links in the description below. Read the website and really familiarize yourself because I think these assets are poised to decorrelate from the greater crypto market in 2022. And again, let's talk about why. You know, reason number one is something called Hart's Law. Hart's Law basically says that the prices of things, and especially in the crypto market, are correlated to the prices of their primary liquidity pairs. In other words, whatever the liquidity is bonded to the tightest in terms of altcoins or cryptocurrencies, they're going to go up and down in tandem with other cryptocurrencies. For example, in 2017, the best way to buy a lot of altcoins was through Bitcoin. You buy Bitcoin, you go to an exchange, you pay for coins on an exchange. And because every coin is priced in Bitcoin and Bitcoin's the gateway drug, so to speak, well, if Bitcoin crashes, that brings the whole rest of the crypto market down with us, which we saw in the 2017 bubble. A good visualization of Hart's law is NFTs, right? There's a huge NFT craze right now, and we could see a very obvious example of it uh, on OpenSea now, I really don't like NFTs. I think they're going to be the first thing to crash when the greater crypto market turns down like it might or might not in 2022 or later. But the reason I'm using these as an example, guys, is because NFTs are primarily priced in Ethereum, right? You see the floor prices of all these random silly pictures of monkeys listed in terms of Ethereum. So the floor price is 13.8 on this this one in particular. Let's, let's click into this, for example. You can see that in order to buy any of these NFTs, you first have to buy Ethereum and you have to pay for them in Ethereum because that's how the bidding is done. I mean, somebody's paying six Ethereum. That's like $30,000, guys, for this stupid, stupid picture. Don't even get me started on how overpriced and how much of a bubble I think these are. But the reason that things are so risky right now is that being correlated so tightly to the Ethereum price acts as leverage. So for example, if the Ethereum price drops by 50%, assuming that someone's still willing to pay six Ether, for this silly picture. The value of this automatically drops by 50% because the USD value of Ethereum dropped 50%. Now, when that happens, there's gonna be fear and, and blood and all kinds of emotions going on. So it's very, very unlikely that people are gonna be able to get out by selling it for the same amount of Ether that they actually bought it for. So when prices are going up, yeah, this amplifies the effect of NFTs and it was partially to blame for why they exploded in value so much is because the primary liquidity of NFTs is in Ethereum, but when stuff hits the fan, so to speak, you better believe that NFTs are going to be one of the first things to drop harder and faster than even the greater crypto market. Because again, the primary liquidity of a lot of altcoins and NFTs is just one example. It is tied to the big two or three, Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
and some other layer one blockchains. How is Hex different from this, right? We can go over to apphex.win and we can see that unlike a lot of the crypto markets, Hex is primarily only traded on Uniswap or decentralized exchanges, right? Where all the volume is transparent and all the liquidity is put up by the users. So we can see a direct public breakdown of where the liquidity lies right here in different Uniswap pools. And we can see that 86% of liquidity is locked in these USDC pairings. So the Hex USDC pairs are insulating us from price crashes because, you know, if Ethereum crashes, Hex doesn't get pulled down in terms of USD value along with the price of Ethereum because things are primarily tied to USDC. Well, in a bear market, which we might have coming up and we're always at risk for, we've been in a bull market for a while. In a bear market, you want to be tied to USD because if your liquidity is tied to USD, then when people sell all the other altcoins around you, you know, you're not actually tied and your value isn't based as much in those other altcoins or coins like Ethereum, for example. So we're protected from price drops in Ethereum by tying most of the liquidity in Hex to, in fact, USDC. Now, in a bull market, it's the opposite, right? In a bull market, it's kind of good to be tied to Ethereum because, hey, the prices go up together and, you know, it acts like an amplification. So it acts like leverage in both ways, right? On the way up, if you're tied primarily in liquidity to Ethereum, you get to benefit from, from some of the price rise in Ethereum. But if you're tied on the way down when markets are crashing, and when the Federal Reserve is so hawkish like this in this scary environment coming up, you don't want to be tied to Ethereum. Reason number two, that things like Hex and Pulse Chain are poised to really, really separate from the overall crypto market and why they're so different is because look at this chart right here, guys. This is the Bitcoin USD chart. Just today, we took a big dump down to 41,000 and things are not looking too good, guys. Bitcoin fell out of its parabola back here in April and March, right? And then it tried to make a double top and everybody was expecting that blow off top, but it didn't happen. And because it didn't happen, this is unprecedented for Bitcoin. Bitcoin seems to not be doing so great. I would personally not want to be holding it right now because it looks like a bloodbath. Okay. And same with Ethereum too. But guys, if you haven't heard about PulseChain.com or PulseX.com yet, these coins haven't actually launched yet. And the good thing about the timing of their launch in a couple of months is that it might give Bitcoin enough time to start the, start the downward trend of a bear market in Bitcoin. But as we know from, from Hex's launch on December 2nd, 2019, launching a coin in a bear market is actually the best possible time to be launching that coin. I'll say that again. You want to launch your coin in the bottom of a bear market. That is the best possible time to launch a coin. Why? Because there's nothing but upside potential from there. Do you really want to ride the negative sentiment down by launching at the top of a bull market? That's really a terrible idea. So you want to launch when people have maximum fear, right? Because there's not anywhere left to go at that point. You want to launch your coin when people capitulate because the only way to go is up. Does that make sense? So, so even to look at Hex as an example, Hex launched on, like I said, December 2nd, 2019. That was right here, guys, when Bitcoin was about $7,200, right around this mark right here. So Hex was able to capture all of that price rise of Bitcoin and the greater crypto market because Honestly, look at this chart, guys. This isn't even the full chart right here, guys. This is why Hex has shown some of the most impressive growth out of any cryptocurrency. It is the number one performing asset of 2020 and 2021. And that's why a lot of people have made ridiculous gains and it's only just getting started, right? Look, we've gone up 455,000% from all-time lows, right? This is an incredible price rise and that's not even from all-time highs, right? That's at today's prices. From all-time highs, we've done a 10,000x which is obviously without staking. So if you were staked during this whole time, you would have made even more money. And a lot of people that got in Hex are sitting on piles of passive income generating money and they're all very happy. And this is expected to continue for years due to fundamental reasons that I talk about in all my other videos. So the point is, guys, by launching in a bear market, we got to benefit from the amplification effects of the greater crypto market. So when Pulse Chain launches, and again, it's been delayed as we know, but when Pulse Chain launches in maybe two months, let's say, we'd like to see a lot of the Bitcoin a lot of the steam come out of Bitcoin. So this delay is actually working out very well with the timing because if we can kick off the bear trend and get even farther along in the bear market, the closer we get to the bottom of the bear market, the better time it is to launch Pulse and Pulse X and the more opportunity there is for everybody. Now, what's another way that Hex can decouple from the overall crypto markets and traditional markets? If we enter a stage where the Fed raises interest rates and where things become temporarily maybe bearish or stagnant, well, again, Hex and Pulse Chain are poised to succeed and and we have to take a look at the fundamentals. The fundamentals are insulating us from greater macro conditions because Pulse Chain is a separate network that's totally unrelated to ETH at all. It's basically Ethereum with near zero gas fees and with three second transaction time. Okay, long story short, it's cheap and fast. And Ethereum is neither of those things. 
And if we look at Hex, Hex's fundamentals are always looking good. Let's just look at the unique stakers over time, because as we know in Hex, stakers are actually paid to hold up the price by the mechanism of staking, whereas in Bitcoin, Bitcoin miners are paid to pollute the environment and sell the price down to pay for electricity costs. So without negative externalities like that, Hex is actually a lot better of a coin to hold, more attractive to hold long term. And we can see this is live blockchain data. From August of 2020, there were 16,600 unique stakers. And all the way to October 2021, we had 66,000. So it's now January 2022, and we have well over 77,000 unique stakers. So these numbers are always increasing. Maybe some months it's faster, maybe some months it's a slower rate, but this number is always increasing. And I think we can bank on this fact to continue for a long time to come as more and more people find out about Hex. I mean, imagine if even 1% of the world held Hex. Right now, 77,000 stakers is 0.0000. 0.1% of the 7 trillion people in the world. So it's only a matter of time before they find out about this great asset, not to mention all the stuff going on behind the scenes, like fiat on-ramps, for example, easy ways to buy hex with a credit or debit card, guys, directly from your bank account. This is coming to the USA. People are working on this right now. Again, it's only going to be a matter of time. Now, we don't have a launch date or anything, but this is an example of what a fiat on-ramp might look like to really make it easy for people to get into hex. See, people are working on the right things in hex, whereas in a lot of other coins and altcoins, they're focused on things that don't make the price go up. They're focused on a lot of highly technical Rube Goldberg machines, which in my opinion, oftentimes don't really matter, right? They're nothing more than proof of concepts, whereas Hex is fully ready, fully complete. And this is an example of a fiat on-ramp that doesn't work in the USA, but it's called hexakin.store. And you can actually buy Hex with a credit card or debit card if you live in the EU or some other countries. Also going on behind the scenes are things that actually pump the price, like the Hex Investment Trust, right? We don't have many details about this yet, but this is basically like the grayscale of Hex, right? People are working on this right now. And again, there's no launch date on this, but these are extremely bullish things behind the scenes fundamentally that push the price up because the Hex Investment Trust is similar to what Grayscale does. What Grayscale does is they sell a derivative index of Bitcoin on the open market to Wall Street and basically opens up an ETN to be traded that tracks the price of Bitcoin, but they never actually sell underlying Bitcoin. They just take accredited investor money into the trust and they buy up the price of Bitcoin. So they basically only buy and then they hold that Bitcoin to back the value of the publicly traded note on Wall Street, right? So what happens with a company that just buys up Bitcoin and never sells? Well, Grayscale was hugely instrumental to pumping the price of Bitcoin, and the Hex Investment Trust is basically the same idea behind that, okay? And now finally, guys, if there is a bear market in stocks, crypto, whatever, which might happen, you know, we don't know, especially with the Fed acting like they're acting, how else can Hex, Pulse Chain, Pulse X decorrelate? Well, these coins are decorrelated because of their isolated infrastructure, and this is actually proven in the day-to-day -day activity of Hex in terms of the price. We can look at, you know, on Twitter, for example, Richard Hart always makes these Flores Lava posts. Where he'll, where he'll show a big red day across the whole crypto markets, you know, pure bloodbath. And then what's the only beacon of hope? It's, it's just Hex sitting there on a green day. Now, there's so many of these. If you scroll down, you can just search for Richard Hart and then The Floor is Lava on Twitter. But he does these all the time to really highlight that, yes, it is very often that Hex is up while everything else is down. And this is true of the, the reverse, too. Things might be up while Hex is down. But the thing to realize is that this is proof of Hex's decorrelation from the greater crypto market and proof that, that it could remain protected in terms of price in the event of things going down in Bitcoin or Ethereum. So just look at all these guys. We can keep scrolling and this just happens over and over again, right? The floor is lava. Funny way to look at it, right? But if you want some more technical data, this is an actual chart of the ROI comparison between Hex and Bitcoin. And we can see that the correlation levels cluster around zero correlation. So this origin point right here, uh, this is zero at the origin. And all these dots show the daily ROI comparison of Hex versus Bitcoin. So the closer it is to zero, and it looks pretty close to zero, the more that is actual proof that Hex is decoupled from the greater crypto market. And again, we want this, especially if there's financial instability in the greater stock market and the Fed is trying to, to mess with things, right? So it's almost like moving to a new country, right? Pulse Chain is going to be the network layer for Hex and Hex will live on the Pulse Chain and it'll basically be like its own ecosystem, its own country, right? A lot of people want to move to where they're treated best. It's almost like when the USA spawned off of Great Britain in the 1700s, right? They left because they were being treated badly and they went to a brand new country with blue skies where their economy could really thrive because nobody was telling them what to do. And they were insulated. They were landlocked on both sides, which allowed the USA to become a powerhouse, both financially, economically, politically. Basically, the USA was perfectly poised to be a superpower for the next 200 years. And we could use this kind of geographical analogy 
to relate it to Hex and Pulse Chain as well. If you go to a new country where you treat your users better, you don't take advantage of them with crazy high gas fees and it becomes easier to onboard with fiat on ramps and investment trusts and all these things we've talked about, and your liquidity is decoupled from Ethereum and everything like that, well that establishes you as an ecosystem for massive success on a decades long timescale. So those are some reasons about why I'm so bullish on Hex, Pulse Chain, and Pulse X, even if a greater bear market does occur, right? So I know there's a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, especially due to the Fed trying to retract on their inflation. And guys, who knows? They might not even be able to stop inflation. It might be too late at this point, and money printer go burr is really the only solution they've had for the past two years, even longer, right? So I don't have a crystal ball. I'm not trying to tell you what will happen, just what I think could happen and where I want to be positioned regardless of if we're in a bull or bear market in the traditional system. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and I'll see you on the next video.